Hello everyone, welcome to Empowered Learning. This is the second video on the uh, transportation and transshipment models uh, lesson. And we had two other topics that we need to talk about. Um, one is called the shortest path model and uh, the other one will be um, when we talk about um, or using minimal spanning trees. So in this example, um, we're looking at um, a company that wants to transport beds over a network. And the numbers on each arc represents the, the, uh, the miles in between each node. Or if you want to put that another way, it's going to be the number of miles in between uh, a particular location. So of course, um, we start off from our factory and then we will um, go to like certain destination locations and then eventually get to the warehouse. And so if this is a, a long trip, let's say uh, they need to stop somewhere to uh, you know, pick up some item or um, they need to get gas, something like that. So, okay. So uh, that's kind of what this is about. And so everywhere um, except for in node one and node six, this uh, each of those nodes will be what we call transshipment nodes. In other words, everything that's going in it must also go out of it. Okay. So uh, if we want to model this, we know that uh, the flow on road from node I to node J is going to be uh, how we're going to label this. So uh, for instance, uh, let's go back a slide here. If I want to know what's going to be the flow going from node one to node three, then I'm going to label that as X sub one, three. Okay. And we know that if we do this, if this equals to one, then that means that um, we actually took that route. If it equals zero, then it means we did not take that route. So in other words, uh, this means uh, we didn't travel down it, and um, when it equals one, that means we did travel down or travel through that particular route. Now, when we model everything, uh, this is sort of what it's going to look like. So if we notice, all of this here is saying um, the amount of miles that are in between one node and another. So in between node one and node two, we have 100 miles. In between node one and node three, we have 200 miles. And just to remember where that comes from, node one and node two, 100 miles. Node one and node three, 200 miles. And our goal here is to minimize um, the total amount of miles that we take. And if you remember, our decision variable is either going to be either be equal to zero or one. So zero means we're not traveling at all. One means we're going to travel those miles. And so uh, we'll have a bunch of ones and or zeros for each of the decision variables. And everywhere where that's one, that'll get added up. And that will be the total amount of miles that um, we would go on this route to transport these bags from um, from the, from the factory to the warehouse. Now, our peer demand node is just everything that's coming into uh, node one and coming out of uh, node one, okay? So if you notice we have um, node two to node one, node three to node one. So we'll go back there and look at that. So we got node two to node one and node three to node one. That's your supply. Now, of course, what's coming out should be everything coming from node, excuse me, erase that. Everything coming from node one to node two, as well as node one to node three. And of course, node one to node two, node one to node three. And of course, uh, we have the negative one there because we know that that is a pure supply node. So whatever happens 
uh, whether we have a zero or one for any of these, the total amount has to be just negative one. Okay. All right. So now we're going to talk about uh, transshipment node two. And of course, um, if we go to node two, we want to see everything that's going in it, everything that's going out of it. And that's how we will model uh, the rest of these, uh, except for the demand, of course. So for node two, I'm going to uh, erase some of this so that so I'm going to be drawing a lot of lines here. So for node two, we see what's going in it is everything from node one to node two, node three to node two, node four to node two. So everything that's going in, node one to node two, node three to node two, and node four to node two. Okay. Now what's coming out of it is actually going to be uh, pretty much, oh, actually, I'm sorry, I forgot about this. This is node 5 to node 2, so that will be in there as well. Now, everything that's coming out is just going to be just the opposite, right? Um, going out is going to be node 2 to node 1, node 2 to node 3, node 2 to node 5, and node two to node four. Okay. And of course, the, the total result of that is going to be zero because everything that has to go in has to be going out. And our goal here is to say, which one of these routes are we actually going to take? And as you can see, that's how we model transshipment node two. Now, of course, all the other transshipment nodes uh, will be modeled the same way. So if we get down here to the, to the demand node, um, of course, it's just like the supply node. We need to look at everything that's going in, that's going out, but the result here is going to be one. And so now if we set that up in our Excel uh, program here, we'll see again that our distances we have that chart available. And of course, there are some distances that aren't available to us. Like for instance, node one to node four, there's nothing there. Now, of course that makes sense because when we look at this, there is no direct connection from node one, which is right here to node four right there. So that's why that's left blank. And every location where um, we do not have a direct connection, of course we leave it blank. It's not gonna be um, a part of the decision variables. Okay. Of course, here uh, we're doing our flow in and flow out equations. So everything that we just modeled, um, we're keeping track of that in this particular column. Um, the, the flow in, keep track of that. Flow out, keep track, keep track of that. Okay. And of course, um, what you see here for flow in is the same thing. That you see here. So uh, this cell and that cell is the same, this cell and this cell is the same, that cell, that cell is the same, this cell, that cell is the same, and so on and so forth. This cell and that cell is the same. So all we're doing here is just um, we're, we're really sort of copying and pasting in a sense to try to uh, make sure that everything that's in the flow in, which is going like this, and the flow out is the same. All right. And so now um, we want to end with the minimal spanning tree. And so this situation, uh, what we're going to look at is, uh, let's say, a, a small housing development area. And they want to be able to connect water pipes to um, all the houses that are um, in this immediate area. And you want to find um, a way to do this by laying the least amount of pipe as possible. Okay? And so all that they really care about is, is that we have a connection to all houses. And so um, what that looks like if we're looking at a, um, 
uh, a network is that we want to make sure that all nodes are connected somehow, some way. Okay. Now, the uh, process in which we do this is, of course, we're going to select any node. And then from that, now we're going to look at if we can go from one node to the other, um, what distance, or in this case, what number is going to be the smallest. And so in, in graph theory and networking theory, anytime we have um, a line or an edge, or as we call it here, an arc uh, that is numbered, we call that a weighted edge or a weighted arc. And so we basically want the um, edge or arc with the smallest weight, and then we uh, go to that. And then as we uh, keep, as we go to other nodes, we keep on asking that question. Well, what is the um, arc that has the least amount of weight on it? So what's going to be the smallest number? And we keep on going to that. Now, one thing that we have to remember is when we're doing this, if the if let's say we go from, um, let's say we got a node one here, we go to node two. If we have like a node four that's over here and a node five that's there, um, let's say the, the weight of this is four and the weight going here is three. Um, if we've already gone to this particular node here, even though it is a smaller weight, we want to avoid that. Because once we connect the node, we don't want to go back to it. Okay, so um, in the decision making process, that's one of the things that we have to consider. All right, so if we start this off, um, I'm actually going to just do it from start to finish, and then show you uh, what the slides show afterwards. So I'm going to uh, change colors here so that you can see uh, what's going on. So I'm going to change to uh, blue. All right. So let's say we start off at node one. If we look at node one, we see that we have three, two, and five. So of course, two is the smallest weight. So we want to go from node one to node three. Okay. Then, once we're at node 3, we see that we have a 2, we have a 3, we have a 7, we have a 5, and we have a 3. So, of course, 2 seems to be the smallest one, so we want to go in this direction. Okay. Now, where we have 1 and 3 connected already, and I'm, we're going to keep tallies of this. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we've already taken care of 1. We're taking care of three, and we're connected to four now. So now we need to be connected to two, five, six, seven, and eight. So uh, going from four, we see that we could connect to six, uh, node six, but that weight is six. That's kind of high. Uh, we also see that um, we can go back here to node one, but of course we already have that connected. So we're not even considering this anymore. Okay, So at this point, going from node 4 to node 6 is going to be a long distance. So what we may want to do is come back here to node 3 and kind of see, all right, is there a cheaper way to go or, or um, another way to go? And so here we could either go this route or we can go this route because both of them are 3. Okay, Now, um, Let's just say we go this route. Okay. And if we go that route, then we're here at node two. So we've taken care of node three. Now we have node two connected. Now, node two, uh, we have an edge, weight three, weight three. So it's the same going either way. And we have weight three going here, going from three to six. So um, we will probably uh, be better off uh, kind of going this way, only because if you look here, we go from two to three, that's three. And then from five to seven, that's four. Whereas here, if we go from three to six, that's three. 
and then from six to eight, that's one. So you see that the, the total distance we're going here is going to be seven in between two, node two and node seven, whereas here to get two nodes connected, we only go a total distance of four. So it makes sense to go this way and then that way, okay? And so now by doing that, we have node six and eight also connected. And so now all we need is node five and node seven connected. So uh, here to get node seven connected, um, we would either have to go through here, uh, go two to five this way, or we could go um, and get seven connected just by going two. So uh, that seems to be smaller distance. So let's just go from eight to seven. And so now we have that connected. And so the last thing we need to worry about now is just getting to node five. And of course, um, from what we see here, the shortest way to get there is just going from node two to node three. And so that would be the the way that we would need to uh, lay the, the water pipes down so that um, we have we use the minimum length as possible. So now if we go through here, of course, I selected that and then we went from three to four. And then uh, you notice here, you could have also gone, instead of going from node three to node two, you could have gone, went from node three to node six. Keep on going, we'll go from node two to node five. And then we, you see, we came back here. So I actually went here first and then went back up there. And then go from node six to node eight and then from node eight to node seven. And so that's how we use uh, minimal spanning trees to be able to help us out in trying to figure out uh, minimal distance type situations. And so uh, this concludes the second part of the uh, transportation models, transshipment models, and, and networking models lesson. So I hope this helped. Take care.